Hello, Boston. How are you? Yeah, right on. Look at you. It's all fully lit. Good evening. You guys, you guys pleasantly surprised? Yeah? Just thought you were showing up for a gig. Now you're getting a taping. We got given a little bit of a riot act, which is tough on the people of Boston. I know you don't like to behave, so it's cool. Yeah, especially you. All right. Good to be here. I'm from Nova Scotia. See, I like that reaction here in Boston. This is the only place in America where I get that reaction because none of you other fuckers know that I exist. Any, anywhere else in America, you say you're from Nova Scotia and I can see them all react going, that's, that's not real. That's, that's something from Harry Potter or something. So it's good. This is the only place that understands. We have a relationship with you people. You know, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Nova Scotia, where I'm from, Halifax, we give you our Christmas tree. All right. A few of you do know this. So more than a century ago, we had a big explosion in Halifax, Nova Scotia. People were dying in the streets, and you guys sent us your doctors and nurses in a state some of you are not in. Yeah, I know. Well done, you. Doesn't sound like Boston at all, does it? <laughs> You guys cared. You hooked us up long time ago. Took care of us. And how Canadian were we? We all so we kept up the tradition. We went, all right. They sent us all their doctors. Let's send them our biggest Christmas tree every year. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a little thank you to you. You get a tree. You get a tree and Brad Marchand, apparently. That's, that's, what I, that's what I, those are the two things we decided to give you. <laughs> a Christmas tree every year and one of the meanest hockey players in the existence. <laughs> yeah, man. Marchand's from my neighborhood. We watched him growing up biting people's cheeks and taking out people at the knees. And we were all thinking he doesn't belong here. <laughs> it's too tough. Where can we send him? Boston. He'll, uh, He'll suit Boston. He suited you guys just fine. Sport, you're, you're the weirdest sports city in all of them. The rules change when you come to Boston. No matter what game you're playing, it's different. Your hockey team's a little bit meaner with the Marchand effect. You know, your football team, you've got some cryogenically <laughs> created quarterback. <laughs> sits up out of a vat of ooze for every game. Your baseball team plays in a field that wouldn't exist by modern standards. You guys have weird shit going on in Fenway Park that no other team can comprehend. Every other team in the major leagues is going like, you know, they have to deal with weird issues like we have. Our AstroTurf is a bit slippy. Our, our dirt's a bit hard, but you guys, you have like scoreboards left over from the 1800s <laughs> that balls can ricochet off of. And somehow, because you're Boston, you've refused to change. <laughs> I like that. I like that about you. You have a ladder. You have a ladder, those of you who don't know this, on your green monster, you have a ladder 30 feet infield because 100 years ago, you used to have a net up there so somebody could climb up and get the balls. And now you have seating up there. The mesh is gone, but the ladder remains because you guys are like, fuck it. <laughs> like a little bit of randomness. Teams come to town to play against you people, and then they get to be told before the match, like, hey, there's a ladder in the outfield. Everybody's like, well, can we move it? Now we've bolted it to the wall. <laughs> well, what happens when the ball hits it? It's in play. <laughs> it's the only field you can come to and get an injury off a ladder in the middle of the field. I love it here. I love America. I've never lived in a country before that advertises drugs on television. <laughs> yeah, one lady, one lady high is all hell right there. Just 
very openly proud. That's what's great about you guys. I grew up in countries with socialized medicine, grew up in Canada, and then lived in Britain. Illegal to advertise drugs on TV. Because it gets dangerous. Yeah, it makes people self-diagnose. Not here, you guys don't care. You're like watching the Big Bang Theory and in the second commercial break, some dude comes out and goes, hey, do you suffer from the human condition? <laughs> Maybe you want some of these drugs we got. <laughs> Which is amazing, man. And now we've got an opioid crisis in this country and nobody can figure out why. Maybe it's because we see them every night. You're all walking into your doctor. In Canada and Britain, Canada and Britain, you grow up and you're like, if you feel ill, go see your doctor. Here in America, you go tell your doctor. <laughs> you go see your doctor and you go, hey doc, last night, me and the missus, we were watching This Is Us. <laughs> and we thought, we don't cry enough. Do you have something that can help us out? <laughs> That's why sends out a racist tweet while on Ambien, and half of America went, that makes sense, that tracks. <laughs> she was on Ambien. Everybody's, you know, default position when you're on a sleeping drug is racism. <laughs> When's the last time one of your friends used that excuse on you? Dude, I'm sorry that I showed up to your picnic in blackface. But in my defense, I was exhausted. 